Frantic Friday saw Kingston College and their indomitable spirit against the odds fight into the semi-finals. Mona is through, while one of the pre-tournament favorite stats said goodbye. Now it's time for spectacular Saturday. Three of the four Group 2 teams still in with a shot of making the last four. The two winningest schools in Manning Cup history among them, defending champions Jamaica College take on St. George's College. We are at the Ashenheim Stadium. It is the home of JC. Today, they know they will be up against it in this elimination battle. St. George's College in light blue, Jamaica College in dark blue. It's time for the national anthem of Jamaica. away from this titanic battle in the quarterfinal round of the Issa Digicel Manning Cup competition for 2023. Jamaica College, the defending champions, taking on St. George's College, who are looking to return to the semi-finals for the first time since 2018. Ricardo Chambers alongside Chris Taylor for this quarterfinal matchup. Tivoli Gardens are taking on Heidel in the other game in this group. O'Shane Nation, like he was in midweek the Costa Cup action, is the man in the middle for this one. Rickton Archer and Sivan Smith, sec first and second assistants, with Paul Green, the fourth official, for this encounter. The Jamaica College boys know they have a big jump to do. They will have Raul Brenton in goal, also in the lineup. Tariq Jones, Javon Mills, Tahir Lawrence, Renson Sayers and Malachi Sterling in what may be a back five. Maybe they'll morph into their more familiar 4-4-2 with Zabir Taylor, Adrian Reed, or make that with Dylan John, Jamari Bennett, Amari King and Jabari Howell with Jamoy Dennis also in this Davian Ferguson coached lineup. The captains take center stage. Adrian Reed for St. George's College, Renson Sayers Jr. for Jamaica College. The officials take their final moments ahead of kickoff. St. George's College, they only need a draw to make progress to the last four of the competition. Dejon Davis will be in goal. A back five, left back, Ajani Peart, right back, Jindu Powell with Jaheim Henry, O'Neill Mitchell and Michael Pennant in central defence. Zabir Taylor, their third leading scorer this season, Adrian Reed and Tayshawn O'Neill in midfield with Matthew Spence and their leading man, Brian Burkett, at the top of this Marcel Gale coach team. Neville Bertis Bell is the technical director. Chris Taylor, what an occasion. 
Yeah, lovely stuff. Always a tight battle. No surprise to see so many fans coming in. Thought it would have been more packed by now. But yeah, two teams that have played excellent football so far this season. St. George's undefeated. Jamaica College, well, on, well, on paper they have faced, they have, they have had two defeats. One of them obviously points overturned against Tivoli. They actually won that match in 90 minutes on the pitch. And yeah, that loss against Heidel. All to play for. All to play for indeed. This is how they start today. St. George's College ahead of Heidel with Jamaica College and Tivoli. Tivoli, the only team out of contention. Very much the case. We'll go through the permutations shortly because there are several as we get kickoff in this all-important quarter-final encounter in the Manning Cup. Chris Taylor, the last time Jamaica College didn't make it to the semi-finals of the Manning Cup was in 2012. They were actually unbeaten that season. I guess who won? St. George's College went on to win that title. Incidentally, beat Heidel in the final. Jamaica College and Heidel admitted at the, at the second round stage as it was back then. And they drew that game. Heidel advancing on goal difference over Jamaica College. That was 11 years ago, and they have made it to the last four, at least every tournament since. There is Davian Ferguson, which means since he has taken over, he hasn't failed to get to the semi-final stage of the Manning Cup. So much pressure on the defending champions today. And they will look to come out on the front foot. Remember the 2021 campaign, the COVID season, and Jamaica College barely made it into the last four. They got only two points and a scraped through. Two points will not be good enough this time. There's never Bertis Bell on the Manning Cup with St. George's College in 1992. They won the Walker Cup that season as well. Has had three stints with St. George's College. The latest began in 2007. He's won 11 titles with them since that time. Incidentally, Chris Taylor, he's had four unbeaten seasons, Neville Bell, as coach of St. George's College. Never before this season had they gone through the first round without dropping a point. This season being the first in his long successful history of coaching this unit. That's amazing, especially when you consider some of the size that he's had, some of his teams. And I'm sure most won't rank this team as, as the best that he has coached, necessarily. But yeah, very dominant in their group. And coming of age, they've been together for some time now. St. George's College heading forward, looking for Burkett. First yellow card of the encounter. And it goes to Jamoy Dennis. They know the danger of Burkett, nice one-two play passing. And yeah, he knew what he was doing, didn't he? Jamoy Dennis, and has to be careful now. So early in the piece. Only in the third minute, free kick coming up for St. George's College. Burkett has scored 19 goals this season for STGC. They didn't have him for the first game of the quarterfinal round. But they'll be delighted that he is back for this one. Adrian Reed is there as well. Was out on cards, Brian Burkett. Now, this angle actually suits Adrian Reed more as a right footer. Not the easiest of angles, but very good from the dead ball, Adrian Reed, and has scored quite a few free kicks this season as well. Of course, has played all the way up to the Premier League level with Cavalier. If it's Burkett, it will be swung to the back post, you figure. Burkett leaves, Reed strikes, curls it away from the target. Technically very good from the dead ball. Takes penalties even at the Premier League level. And always clinical, Adrian Reed. Of course, the son of his, the son of Adrian Reed, senior former national player. Yeah, always curling wide. Good pace behind it though. Last season was a part of the Colts unit as well that made it to the final, eventually losing to champions. So amazing to think that 
a youngster who could be playing Coles was still playing in the Premier League. St George's College on the front foot again. This one falls for Renton in goal. battle on for the ball. O'Shea Nation always seems in a no-nonsense mood when he's out there. One yellow card already. Free kick coming up for Jamaica College. And the same two players that were doing battle, he's having another word with them, Dennis included and Burkett. This is just the start of a love battle between those two. Free kick for Jamaica College goes long, top of the area. Reed was there to head it away, but JC come forward once more with Dennis. Dennis gets inside the box, he's well tackled up again by Reed. Pennant sends it long for STGC. Chris Taylor, St. George's College and Heidel only need draws to advance to the semi-finals of the Manning Cup. So once they avoid defeat, they will be through. Jamaica College have to win. There is a situation where both Jamaica College and St. George's College can advance to the semi-finals, but that would mean Tivoli would have to beat Heidel and beat them by two clear goals at least. This match, I guess, would have to end in a draw. There you go. At that, at that point, St. George's College would top the group with five points. JC would come second with four. And then... Heidel would finish... Well, depending on the goal four, difference. But an yes. goal difference, if that was the case. Burkett delivers the corner kick. Too much weight on this one, and it goes away from the target. So even though Hi Tivoli have no chance of going through, they pay a, 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 they are a huge piece in this puzzle. And they do have big game changers that could certainly take a game away from Heidel, so they can't take that game lightly at all, even though Tivoli are yet to record a point in the, in the group. Looked as if they would get a point Tivoli against Jamaica College in the last game. JC stole it late to get all three points. Proving crucial for them, meaning their destiny remains in their own hands. St. George's College again attacking with some amount of flair. Easily cleaned up by Malachi Sterling at the back for JC. Coming from Wilmers Malachi Sterling, talented left foot, likes to get forward as well. JC getting forward. Strong challenge from O'Neill Mitchell. He's come across from Kingston College to join the STGC unit. Crossing North Street. Yeah, poor touch there from Mills. STGC on the front foot again. The diagonal ball looking for Taylor. But it was Raul Renton who got there first. Crowd building on this lovely Saturday afternoon as JC hit forward. Cleared away by Jaheim Henry.
Yeah, and Oshane Nation having a strong talking to Sterling. You can already feel the tension, Chris Taylor. Yeah, no surprise. And if you look at the last match in the head-to-head, -head, these two teams nowhere near. It's a long ball coming in. And Davis handled it well. Yeah. It's nowhere near that kind of disparity between the two teams. In fact, it was so strange to see in 2021 both teams being drawn in the same zone. It showed the level at which St. George's were at the time. They had fallen off quite a bit. And yet, JC beat them by six goals to, no, to nil. Here is a chance for JC. Super save from the Sean Davis. That looked as if it had 1 0 written all over it. Here's Dylan John. He's taken down by Reed, but he's right back up. All the cheers getting louder for JC. This is going to be a marvelous Saturday afternoon. End to end stuff here. Jamaica College in possession over on the far side. Switching the angle of the attack. That was a chance for Howell. Should have found his way past the keeper. Could save in the end, credit to him, but maybe the finish a little bit too central from Howell, who was closed early by Davis. Here's JC heading forward again, and dangerously so with Jamoy Dennis. Dennis inside the box, chance to cut it across. Missed by King. And wow. Amarna King couldn't poke it home when he really should have. Jamaica College creating the opportunities here, but they haven't been able to take any so far. Chris Taylor in a match like this, it always helps if you can get that early goal to ease the tension, calm the nerves. Mona can tell you about that. Very much. JC dangerously coming forward again. Jabari Howell this time couldn't. And those passes being pinged into the edge, in and around the edge of the 18 yard here, a little bit too easy from a St. George's perspective. Backing off from the attackers and allowing them to take the ball there, dangerous. This was a great overlapping run from Dennis. Just look at him glance up there twice. And the pass was, yeah, the pass was perfect actually. And King should have done better. Total miss kick from King, who has already scored seven goals this season, Amarley King. Last scored against Eltham in their 3 1 victory right here at the Asher 9 Stadium in the second round. Needless to say, that should have been eight. There has been a school of thought in the past, Chris Taylor, that if you can really ruffle St. George's College teams and make it physical contest, that they tend to win. Maybe that's also part of the plan for Jamaica College today to make it as physical as possible. Here yeah. comes JC once more. That's another teasing ball across the face of goal. Yeah, I've always heard that. I, I don't necessarily buy into that argument. I think it has come about because persons look at St. George's and say, well, they play attractive football with lots of passing. So it doesn't mean that they can't match up physically. And we have seen situations where the games have gotten quite physical. Here is Jones with a delivery. Not very well handed by Davis in goal, but he's able to recover comfortably. 13 and a half minutes, still no goals in this one. Two glorious opportunities for Jamaica College, though. Yeah, there have been quite a few instances where the game has got physical and St. George's have still been able to manage it and also play their attractive brand of football, so.
that man so pivotal for St. George's College today, Brian Burkett. 38 goals in his schoolboy football career at the under-19 level, has scored 19 of them this season. Scored 16 in all competitions last season, 15 in the Manning Cup, one in the Walker Cup. In his fourth season, so he has as much experience as you can hope for at the schoolboy football level. Yeah, he was there in that 2021 season, that last time that the matchup where they lost by six goals to nil. It was a real start of this unit. A lot of these players were there in that time, inexperienced a lot of them, and they've grown together and now much improved. What I'd love to see from Burkett is better performances in big games, and this is one of them. This is the kind of match that he needs to come to the fore and produce. Has played at the Premier League level, yes. Very talented left foot, and as you said, scores a lot of goals and, and creates a lot for the team. But in big games, sometimes, he needs to do a bit more. And both himself and Reed, that is one aspect of their game that we'll be looking for, especially in this and in matches to come this season. They also have Matthew Spence, who has scored 12 goals this season. And scored their last goal as well. Yeah. Jamaica College in possession with Howell. An important equaliser against Heidel. In that one-all draw, of course, Heidel were leading for some time. Spence got the equaliser. And an important point. And that also showed resilience and character about the St. George's team that because so many of so many teams, and we saw it with St. Andrew Technical, when they fall behind, they crumble, for example, had had not trailed all season, St. Andrew Technical. Here is JC heading forward. Let's see what they can make of this one. Absolutely nothing. It's won by Zapir Taylor for St. George's College, and now they can look to escape. Here is Adrian Reed back into defense. Have to be careful here. Goal kick coming up. for SDGC, 17th minute of this contest. Pennant for St. George's. Taylor didn't control well, but was fortunate to regain possession of the football. St. George's College struggling a little bit now to get the ball out of their half with the type of fluency that Jamaica College has been able to advance with Tariq Jones with the throw. JC on the front foot once more. Dennis trying to keep it in play with some acrobatics. No success for him. It's a pretty hot afternoon as well, so they are working really hard out there, given the intensity of the game and the importance of it. So we'll it see how quite. long they'll be able to keep this up. Yeah, it is very hot. It is quite hot. I think there will be an expectation of a water break as they have in their conditions of play as well. A water break in each half, especially when conditions ask for it. And today could be very one, much one of those days. It's a gentle breeze, but yeah, at this point, the heat overwhelming. Mitchell unsuccessful with that attempted clearance. It was won by John. Immediately, he was surrounded by two or three St. George's College players, and now SDGC looking to catch JC on the counter. Unsuccessfully so on that occasion. JC with King, cuts it across. Good defensive work from Jindu Paul, I think it was. Yeah, on a couple of occasions, this left side of the St. George's defense has been exposed. Yeah, was One actually O'Neill. Yeah, was actually O'Neill Mitchell getting back. Yeah, to make the clearance. Corner kick coming up for JC. Rinson Sears, who did provide the assist for that Dylan John goal in the 2-1 win against Tivoli. Good from the dead ball, the Vincentian. 
sitters delivers away from the target. And the header will wind up the mark. Coming in from Sterling. Good leap from Sterling, but had so much to do. He was so deep in the 18-yard area, couldn't really generate the power or the accuracy. A lot of fans still coming in, Ricardo. Always a good sign. No team in the Manning Cup has been more resilient than Jamaica College in the last decade. Can they pull off one last Udine act to make it a 12th consecutive campaign in the semi-finals of the Manning Cup? 20th minute of this one, still no goals. Yeah, Davis getting a one in there for time wasting. Of course, remember the permutations. St. George's just need a draw. Jamaica College have to get the win. And Machine Nation and company will be very much aware of that. Hence, just warning the goalkeeper from early. You're not going to be working the clock. Yeah, doubt very much he's already trying to work the clock. It's only the 21st minute of this contest. A long, long way to go. Oh, a lot of these players, they, they work it from minute one. And it's always important to play these games like you have to win them. Agreed. Read. St. George's College doing a really good job in midfield and they win possession of the football again. Well, Jamaica College doing a really good job in midfield. Apologies. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just think Jaheim Henry, it's the second or third time that St. George's number four has been caught on the ball. And I just think in terms of making his decision from the back line, he's taking a little bit too long. Neville Bertus Bella said that to him as well. And again, he's caught on the ball and has to give up a corner. Uh, yeah. From a St. George's perspective, they have to be very much careful of that. No surprise that JC are the aggressors. They need the three points. Sears decided against going in with a cross that time. No, it finally comes in. Adrian Reed is on the money once again to head it away. He's been good so far for St. George's College. Now they try to escape. Again, the ball is given away. They have to be really careful here, St. George's College. Given away a lot of loose balls in the middle of the park. And fortunately for them, JC have not made them pay yet, but they've created the opportunities. Two really good ones so far that should have been punished. Or should have been finished, I should say. Burkett trying to keep this one in play. Jamal Dennis unhappy with the call, but it's a free kick that's coming up for St. George's College. Brian Birkin steps up, puts it in with the left foot. But it's a wayward ball. Oh, here is trouble coming up. The ball given away. And Jamaica College advance. Chance for 1 0. Weak effort. And a comfortable save for Davis in goal. That's another missed opportunity for JC. Yeah, we spoke about Malachi Sterling and how he likes to get forward. Their left-sided defender, Malachi Sterling. Lovely overlapping run here from the number 27. Does well, cuts across the defender. And then just look at this for a pass. That's beautiful. But King takes way too long. And then the finish is really weak. Second really big chance for Amali King. Tavian Ferguson hoping that his team will not rue those missed opportunities. And again, sloppy work coming from St. George's College. Oh, 
sometimes, Chris, when you see so many of those errors, you have to wonder if the occasion is getting to the players, even in a small way. Stands filling out nicely at the Ashenheim Stadium. Sterling delivers, cleared away by Jaheim Henry. Long ball looking for Burkett. Sears again in the way. Top defending. Nil all still as well between Heidel and Tivoli. That match going on at the Prison Oval in St. Catherine. BB Coke lead Cornwall College in the Costa Cup quarterfinal action by two goals to nil. Wow. BB Coke out of St. Elizabeth lost their first match 4 0 at the hands of Gavi Maceo. Now lead Cornwall College, who are coming off of a loss as well, Cornwall College. Their loss came at the hands of Glenn Muir, was it? Dintil, Dintil, with a 2 0 win over Cornwall College. 26th minute of this one, throw for St. George's College. I was looking for Jean Peart. Couldn't get up to get the header in. And Jamaica College head quickly down the other end, but STGC solid this time. A very good clearance from Henry. Gets away with it. Comes out to Howell. Not sure if that was an attempted shot or pass. The crowd very much into this one. Yeah. And you'll also be checking in on the other match as well. Because that will have a lot to do with it with Heidel and Tivoli. Nilo at the moment there as well. Dylan John. Spence keeps it in for St. George's. Jamal Le Bennett for JC. Sterling on his way into the path. Free kick. Dennis has switched flanks as well. Yeah. Caught me off guard for a second there. Yeah. Moving over onto the left hand side, picking up the foul. Busy player is Dennis. Commentary on our last kick. We we're seeing how much Dennis resembles Romain Blake. Jamaica College, number six from last season. Centre back and defensive midfielder who's gone overseas, played at Waterhouse as well. Very similar build and everything. They know how big this occasion is. Free kick coming up for Jamaica College. They have created the clear cut opportunities, at least three of them but they are yet to capitalize. Sears has been putting in some decent deliveries. Sears whips it in, another good delivery! It's gone in, is it? Flag is up, play continues. 
that was another close shave. Yeah. The ball actually went into the goal. The assistant flag for offside. Malachi Sterling is adamant that he didn't touch the ball. He was in an offside position probably though. Not going chase these ways. We approach half an hour. I think the argument of the assistant would be that Sterling is involved in the play. We wait and see. Didn't actually touch it. But yeah, it did end up in the back of the net from Sears. They've done everything right but score Jamaica College, legally at least. There's Sterling again getting back. He's been so good, Sterling. St. George's College start at the top of the table. But they could finish the day third, as that one is just over the top. Third, of course, if they're unable to get at least a point here today. This is a free kick I win from Sears. Well, who would have been in an offside position? Dennis Sudworth. But Sterling wasn't even involved in the play. Malachi Sterling, he's down. Well, we thought at first that Sterling as well was offside. But if you looked at that replay, Sterling wasn't involved in the play any at all. It was actually Dennis. Look at it here. Ah, Dennis might have been coming back from an offside position. Yeah, yeah, Dennis definitely offside. So really good call from the officials. Dennis tried to get back on side, but couldn't do it quick enough. Good defensive work as well. Arrangement in the back line from St. George's. We spoke about Jamaica College's consistency in getting to at least the semi-finals of the Manning Cup. The last time St. George's College got to the semi-finals without eventually reaching the final was 2013. They lost to Wilmers. Wilmers went on to lose the final to Jamaica College, that Wilmers team that had Jaheel Hyde a season. We felt they definitely would have won and didn't turn out to be the case. JC, that's gonna be a yellow card. At least, that was a poor, poor challenge. And look at how high his boot was as well. O'Neill Mitchell. That is a ridiculous challenge from Mitchell. Now look at this. What is he doing? And he's probably an inch away from getting a red card, Mitchell. Luckily for him, his foot passed the face of the Jamaica College player and didn't actually make contact. It looked as almost the back of his knee making contact in the end. I mean, we're so happy for that because <laughs> had his touch made contact here with, to the face, yeah, we, it might have been an emergency. Yeah, Mitchell played his Manning Cup football previously for Kingston College. Now a vital part of the St. George's College back line. And he will be needed today. Hasn't been able to stop JC from creating those opportunities so far. Davian Ferguson with the former Kingston College head coach, Raymond Watson, who has joined the staff here at Jamaica College. And together they are trying to figure it out. Free kick for JC. Sayers again. The JC captain with a chance to test Dejon Davis in goal. Disappointing. Sears has had a couple of free kicks in the previous games, and even though he hasn't scored them, they have definitely been on target and tested the keepers as well. Also with a couple of assists, but that one was, was disappointing. Well over. 
Yeah, you look at this first half and JC will not be happy with the fact that they haven't found a goal, especially with three or four really good chances, not even half chances, full on chances. Tennis out wide. Has a little bit of space, gets a good cross in, chance. Oh, that is a super save. That is as good as it gets from Deshaun Davis. And somehow, it's still goalless in this quarter-final encounter. Yeah, excellent save from Davis. It was Tahir Lawrence getting in there at the back post, the number 14. Well done again by Dennis. Was a missed kick, you know, first up. Was it King again? I think it was King. Maybe a blessing in disguise because Lawrence had a point-blank point opportunity. Jamaica College bearing down and goal once again. The attempted cross from Sterling is blocked and the corner kick is coming up for Jamaica College. How much of this can St. George's College take? Best play on the part for Jamaica College so far in the first 35 minutes. Malachi Sterling driving forward. Very good left foot, can pick a pass as well, Ken Sterling. And yeah, JC, all this pressure needs to count for something on the score sheet. Sayers with another dead ball situation. Whips it in with the right foot. Headed away and further away by Henry. Lifted back inside the area. Mitchell heads it further clear again. Tariq Jones picks it up for Jamaica College. They advance once more. Here is Dennis. Dennis face to face with Mitchell. And Sterling slashes at that one. Blocked. <laughs> John for Jamaica College. Not sure if that was the best executed chess pass, but it worked out. All the way back in defense. Sent forward, picks out King. Lovely take on first turn, but then the next decision, not the best. Dylan John out wide, appeal for handed ball, and they get the call. This is good football from Jamaica College, though. Yeah. Well, St. George is soaking up the pressure, doing well so far. We'll keep one all. Here they come again, Jamaica College, with a Marley King, King across. That's not the best delivery. Lots of blue, light blue shirts back. Speaking about the goals, Dintil have taken the lead against Garvey Maceo. That other quarter-final of the Costa Cup match. That's a great delivery. The header from Dennis is wide. He can't believe that he hasn't put that on target. And once again, Jamaica College unable to make the pressure tail. Delightful ball coming in from their leading goal scorer, Dylan John. He must have thought he would have picked up his fifth assist there, Dylan John, of the season. And Dennis, who provided earlier, should have finished that space for him and all he had to do was direct the head on target because the pace of the delivery from John was perfect you can't want many more easy opportunities in a match of this magnitude I mean, St. George's haven't had anything in the 18 yard area of, of JC so far it's been all defending for them not even an opportunity on the counter and here we go again you could make the point that they are soaking up the pressure, but are they really? Here is Sean. His shot is blocked. And Henry can clear. I was making the point, are they really soaking up the pressure or are hanging on? Yeah. Well, whatever the case, it's working at the moment. Credit to JC, they need the result. As it stands, Heidel, they lead against Tivoli and they lead the group in the live standings on seven points at George's College if they can hang on 
to the draw will also advance. And the defending champions, Jamaica College, will not make the semi-finals for the first time since 2012. Last year's beaten finalists are already out. St. Andrew Technical finishing fourth in that group. Shocking, considering they were the favourites. And yeah, Heidel going ahead against Tivoli from the penalty spot. So many penalties we've seen post-second round, Ricardo. And so many missed penalties as well, so... Mostly from, Hi. mostly from Mona, though. Yeah, well, their trend still continues. Four penalties missed in a row. But yeah, from a Heidel perspective, they'll be happy that they buried their, theirs and an important lead. Again, the ball is given away by St. George's College and in dangerous territory as well. Reed does well to win it back. Chindu Powell unable to control the ball first time and Jamaica College will head the other way with space and time and numbers. Dylan John didn't arrive in time as they switch the direction of the attack but they'll continue to press forward Mitchell forced to defend for St. George's College and he does a very good job of it on a yellow card so he always has to be cautious O'Neill Mitchell but that was a brilliant job to wash the ball into touch for a St. George's College goal kick Neville Bell has seen it all before over 20 Five years of coaching at this level, did coach at St. Jago as well before he coached at St. George's College. He's had so much success. But he hasn't won this title since 2012. It's been a while. came very close in 2018 was it yeah Bennett slips this one forward John unable to turn JC maintained possession Lawrence well and he plays it out of bounds too fancy for his own use Lawrence I'm not so sure I agree with how Dylan John turned there. Got the ball nicely in the box. Went on the half turn and I thought he freed some space for himself. That he could have unleashed a left footed shot. Decided to turn back and it was all closed down by that point. Again, the decisions inside the 18 yard area from JC in this first half have not been the best. And as simple as you see, they could be up three, four goals already. 43rd minute, still no goals at the Ashadheim Stadium. All important quarter final encounter St. George's College only need a draw to advance. Jamaica College have to win. Still such a long way to go. Somehow JC have been unable to score. St. George's College haven't even created a clear cut opportunity. All over the top. Four matches going on into the Costa Cup in the quarterfinal round as well. Glenn Muir and Christiana locked at nil all. So too Manchester and Clarendon College. BB Coke still lead Cornwall College by two goals to nil. And Dintil leading Garvey Maceo by a goal to nil. So Dintil looking for their second win in as many matches of course in group one if Clarendon College and Glenmuir win they will confirm their semi-final places and Christian and Manchester will be out it would be two losses in a row for both those teams so yeah Burkett won it for St. George's College they have a throw for the first time in a while they've gotten deep into their opponent's half work it again but under tremendous pressure and Javon Mills is there to boot the ball away Davian Ferguson made an important point in the pre-match interview that while they needed to be positive they also needed to be disciplined because of the situation they find themselves in Burkett that one skews off the outside of the boot 
you don't get the feeling he will get many opportunities so when he does well, it's another match where I think so far both himself and Adrian Reed haven't been involved in it enough JC heading forward again Lawrence the attempted cross is charged down corner kick coming up for Jamaica College I do wonder if at some point Burkett for example will, there will be some rotation and maybe he will come a bit deeper in the middle of the park they need to have more touches St George's College just to break up the tempo of the game disrupt the JC mobility within the middle of the park because they are totally owning it at this point and Reed and Burkett who have that skill have the ability to distribute keep the ball probably need to come a bit deeper to help them out JC with a good delivery and the final shot is banged over the top the flag was up for offside in any case some big names have already gone home this season St. Andrew Technical and I want to tell you we're talking about the Costa Cup 12-time champions Cornwall College could be heading home as well because they are looking down a second possible defeat and if Dintil and Garvey Maceo draw that game Cornwall are out Stets have already gone home so yeah some big names falling in both competitions so far and many teams who would come in as favorites or outside favorites yeah they're up against it as I said JC another one of them who as it stands now are heading out we are into two minutes of first half stoppage time JC zero St George's College zero enough for SDGC to make the semi-finals not for Jamaica College though they have to win this one especially because Heidel are winning against Tivoli and the only other way JC can advance with a draw is if Tivoli beat Heidel here's a penalty Sapir Taylor taken down in the box and against the run of play in the dying moments of the first half St. George's College with a glorious opportunity to go in front. How many times have we seen this in football? Frustration for Davion Ferguson and company. St. George's have nothing going forward. Here is Taylor. Yeah, that was clumsy, wasn't it? Just look at it here. Mills, the two battle of the two number sixes. Yeah, that's a penalty. Mills taking him down, looking to go shoulder to shoulder credit to Taylor who got in front of him and then clipping the back of his of Taylor's heels was Mills and as you said St. George is probably the first time they've really gotten into the 18 yard area and just like that a chance for the lead this is a massive moment in this game Brian Burkett the leading man for St. George's College stands behind it comes face to face with Rahul Renton. Burkett, easy as you like. St. George's College in front. Light Blue Nation can celebrate. They have been dominated in this first half, but they have the advantage and it's a massive advantage as well because all they need is a draw to advance to the semi-finals of the Manning Cup. And Jamaica College must be wondering, how on earth are we behind? Well, clinical from Brian Burkett, Burkett as he usually is from the spot. 20 goals on the season for Burkett now. I don't think he's had six touches in the game. But he does have six assists to go with those 20 goals this season. And one of them has given St. George's College the advantage going to the break. They were dominated in that first half. They barely got into enemy territory. Jamaica College had at least four clear-cut opportunities. They could not beat Dijon Davis in goal. And somehow, somehow, Neverbell, Marcel Gale and St. George's College are in front at half time. 
with a lead by a goal to nil. much football on your home of champions Jamaica Premier League on Sportsmax Sunday 3 p.m. for ECT Malines United taking on the defending champions Mount Pleasant and Arne Gardens FC up against Tipley Gardens that will be at 6 o'clock in Jamaica 7 ECT and on Monday 5 p.m. 6 ECT Humberview versus Humberline on Sportsmax 2 also on Sportsmax 2 Cavalier versus Waterhouse at 7.30 p.m. 8.30 ECT Back at the Ashenheim Stadium, St. George's College leading Jamaica College by a goal to nil. As it stands, the defending champions, JC, are heading out of the competition. Heidel lead Tivoli by three goals to nil. They have essentially secured their place and they are atop the table with seven points. St. George's College, as it stands with the 1-0 advantage, also have seven, but they still have to hold on, hold off Jamaica College, who, if they can turn this around, can advance with six points. Three still in the fight, but only two can go through. O'Shea Nation getting ready to send the second half on the way. The George's drums are going off in the distance. Fans are still filing into the Ashenheim Stadium, by the way. I guess this is what you call fashionably late. I don't think it works at a football game, though. Final 45 minutes. The last time Jamaica College failed to advance to the Manning Cup semi-finals was 2012. They are in danger of not making it to the last four in 2023. St. George's College have a one nil advantage and Jamaica College must win this game to turn their fortunes around. The battle continues. Heidel seems safe, they are 3-0 up over Tivoli. They are safe, Ricardo. The only way Heidel would not go through is if Tivoli were to defeat them by two clear goals, which means at this point that Tivoli would have to score five. Yeah. Well done, Heidel. It's one of those times I would say I've seen stranger things, but I haven't. <laughs> Heidel doing the job so far. And doing it emphatically as well. Yeah. At the start of the season, they were tipped to be troublemakers, as we like to call them. Not favorites, but a team that could cause a lot of problems. Here is Howell. Spreading it wide for Lawrence. Flag is up. Well, Shane Winisha blowing his whistle, wondering why. Is it a free kick to JC? Seems that way. I thought it was offside initially. I'm well, sure it was an offside because the second assistant on the far side didn't flag anything but he looked towards his fourth assistant 
he's the fourth referee and his first assistant. And well, <laughs> they didn't have much saying, so. All right, here we go. Sayer standing behind this one for Jamaica College. Looking to level early in the second half, having gone behind late in the first. The delivery is gone. And it flashes across the face of goal. And behind for a goal kick. How is that missed yet again? Look at this from Howell. He's missed kick this Howell. Howell putting it wide. Well, again, a scuffed connection. Uh, JC would have needed to score right there just to, at the start of the half, disrupt things early. Back to where they started in terms of the ascendancy and them adding pressure. So, yeah, they've not been clinical so far. And usually in these kind of matches, in these kind of situations, Jamaica College, you usually see the best of them. Sterling driving forward once again. Pass wasn't great though. Here's one for you, Chris Taylor. The last time Jamaica College didn't make the semi-finals of the Manning Cup was the first time Heidel made the semi-finals of the Manning Cup. Heidel are in the semi-finals for the second time. Yeah, and they went to the final on that occasion. 1-0, was 1-0 they lost in the end? Here's Sears. No, they lost 3-0 three three in the three final to St. George's College. Yeah. Out wide to Lawrence. Lawrence slips it inside the box. Might have gone for the cross. Made it a comfortable clearance for STGC. It's a good ball coming in, but it's headed right at Davis, who stands firm once again. Good positioning by Davis. Safe hands as well. Good connection on the header. Powerful header. Yeah, straight to him. Here's this ball is cut out by Reed. Here is Burkett. St. George's College attacking the cross wasn't great from Peart. Reed with the throw. Peart leaves it for Reed. Free kick, JC. 50th minute. The champions under tremendous pressure in their own backyard. They need at least two goals, or else they are out of the Manning Cup. It seems certain now as well, Chris Taylor, as Sabir Taylor is taking down the man who won the penalty. But it seems pretty certain now, Chris Taylor, that Heidel will top the group, which means they will play Kingston College in one semi-final. Kingston College finishing second, second behind Mona in Group 1. And St. George's College would play Mona if this score line holds. Based on goal difference. Yes. Yeah. Far from over, though. Yeah. Both teams would end with seven points, two wins and a draw. Hasn't been a great game in my estimation, Chris. It's been a scrappy game. We saw some quality in the first half in their build-up from Jamaica College. Missed a number of opportunities, but... I would say a lot of quality in everything but the finish from Jamaica College. Lots of quality, closed the midfield, won, ball, won all the battles there, spread the ball wide, good passes inside the area. Everything was present, except the finish. Taylor for St. George's. For St. George's, apart from the Burkett penalty finish, no one really coming to the fore, apart from goalkeeper Davis. I thought he really had a good half, Davis. Looking a lot better in the second half as Reed finds Taylor. Taylor to Burkett. Burkett from distance is well wide. 
much better from his TGC. They have the lead now. And that's what you want from a St. George's standpoint for them to grow into, con into confidence. Grow in confidence. I am missing like the JC attackers. <laughs> it's rubbing off. Well, you got it together, can they? coming forward again but I agree and in the second half what we spoke of in the first half with Burkett and 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 Reed playing a little bit closer together now Burkett has gone back high but at the start of the second half both himself and Reed were playing closer together Burkett a bit deeper a little bit more a few more touches and if you think about the chance where they got in the 18-yard area, it was actually Burkett who executed that pass. So, from that perspective, better. Brenton hasn't had a lot to do in goal for Jamaica College. But he's the one who has conceded. Not that he could do anything with Burkett's left footer from the penalty spot. It goes JC's way. I actually thought Lawrence brought that on himself, though. <laughs> Lawrence looked like he kicked the foot of Spence. <laughs> and let me tell you, if you look at the, the legs of Spence there, a bit like a tank is Matthew Spence. Uh, yeah, lucky to get bailed out there was Lawrence and Jamaica College. And I think that's exactly what St. George's are saying as well. St. George's College bench up and warming. Substitution coming for Jamaica College. Jamani Bennett is off. JD Johnson is on. Nine goals this season for Johnson. Davian Ferguson needs a tenth and maybe even an eleventh from him. Sterling Johnson, the substitute, appeal for handed ball, and it goes the way of St. George's College.
Ashenheim is pretty close to capacity in terms of the crowd now, Chris Taylor. Yeah, as you said, fashionably late. It was very surprising when the game actually started, how thin it looked. A lot of the St. George's supporters were here early, but not the Jamaica College ones. But yeah, still a tight game. A lot can still happen. And even though Heidel have run away with the other one by three goals in it at this point, this one can still go either way. Dylan John. Jones with the cross. Card for Matthew Spence. Obviously, for dissent, something he must have said to one of the assistants. I think it's to the first assistant. The referees are on headset. So, yeah, got the word for Shea Nation. Sterling again. Howell. Johnson! JC level! Brilliant substitution from Davian Ferguson. He hits double figures this campaign and gives Jamaica College a massive chance. Keeps his composure to Jalen Johnson. Yeah, was under pressure and clinical off the far upright. No chance on that occasion for Davis. And as we said, this, a very close match, can still go either way. And by the way, as it stands still, it hasn't changed the table in any way. But Jamaica College a little closer to achieving what they need to do. 11 on the season now for Jalen Johnson. of Arji Baji going on the Shane Nation not having any of it. Sixty first minute. It's one one. Not the yellow card. Johnson, the goal scorer, sees yellow for taking out Burkett. Yeah, a little bit too much lip between the players now, and that has resulted in, in, in that silly challenge there. Needs to get a hold of himself, Johnson. Just scoring a goal, you don't want to get yourself sent off. As Burtis makes a change of his own. Clark on for O'Neill. Shaquan Clark. Takes off his leading assist maker of the season in O'Neill. 12 assists did O'Neill have. And he's off. Sterling sends it long. Lawrence out wide. Johnson, this time the shot is wide, was never in control. And Jamaica College sensing once again that they have the upper hand in this game. Can they get another goal to have the upper hand in the group in the quest for a spot in the semi-finals? Yeah, Johnson getting in the thick of things. Maybe a bit of a surprise that he didn't start, Johnson, but coming off with the kind of energy that JC need. And well, it must be said, finishes of a clinical nature because that's what they lacked in the first half. 
pep in their steps again, JC. Did someone say physical? Yeah, maybe lucky to get away with the booking is Adrian Reed, who is very vocal, the captain. It wasn't actually Reed, was it? Yeah, it was Michael Pennant. Free kick coming up. Sears again. Standing over it for Jamaica College. JC looking for the advantage. Sears floats this one to the back post. Timely header. Away for a throw. Back inside. Right at Davis, who had his near post covered. Johnson once again. What an impact he's made off the bench. Yeah, this match is very tense now. Sidelines, players on the park, the officials on the pressure as well. I don't think anybody would have it any other way. This is as big as quarterfinals get in schoolboy football in the land of wood and water. We're talking about 53 titles between these two schools, Manning Cup titles, that is. It was always going to be this kind of battle. One must go home. One will advance. This is where it can also be more than just your ability to play football. But as a player, you want to embrace these major occasions. There are many persons here embracing it, Ricardo. Maybe including Gerard Morris-Seely, who is on the sidelines. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ricardo. Of course, there's a lot going on down here. It's a heated battle between not only on the field, but between the coaches. Now, Coach ne Neville Bertis Bell from St. George's College is imploring his players, of course, asking them and telling them and shouting at them and make sure that they press the ball and try to get the ball back as soon as possible from Jamaica College and force a bad pass as what Jamaica College was doing to them in the first half. And that is what he's asking his players to do. Of course, he's not satisfied to that level about the pressing that they've been able to come up with, but they're working on it. Over on the Jamaica College side now, you can see the top two wingers, of course. Uh, the, the concept that Coach Ferguson is going with is, of course, getting the control in the midfield, asking his wingers to run a little wider and then cut inside. That is what created a goal for them. And that is what they're trying to break down. That's where they're trying to break down St. George's College on the wingers of, because they see that there is weaker defense on the wing and they're looking to exploit that. So that is all that's happening down here from the sidelines and Gerard Morrissey. Back to you guys in the commentary box. Pon Pon, 67th minute. A result that favors St. George's College. JC need one more goal at least. Talking about defending champions, Clarendon College have a 2 0 lead against Manchester at DeAndre Gallimore Brace in the second half there. BB Cook continued to lead Cornwall College by two goals to nil in second half action. It's still 1 0, by the way, between Dintil and Garvey Maceo. Dintil with a one goal lead. And Glenmuir and Christiana are locked at nil all. This is excellent football now from Jamaica College. Dennis. Being tackled up by Jindu Powell. Still got the cross in. So much to play for.
JC applying pressure with Sterling. Mills. Slipped inside, appeal for a penalty. Nation was right there. No call. Sitters goes long. Looking for Lawrence out wide. Lawrence got ahead to it and picks out Sterling. Sterling back to John. JC spreading this football now and keeping it away from St. George's College. Sears once more. Chips it forward. St. George's College almost chasing shadows at the moment, Chris. Yeah, they won't mind that as long as they keep them at the half line. St. George's. Sterling. Delivers another good ball, offside. headed back inside, the flag is up for offside. Yeah. I don't think Jamaica College are moving the ball quick enough at times though. They are allowing St. George's to get behind the ball, organise themselves and then hoping for a mistake. I like when they transition quickly and if you think about the goal from Howell, even though we're about to see a change, the, the, the pass from Howell, how that goal was constructed from a JC perspective. The ball moved quickly through the middle. Howell with a decisive pass through and Johnson running on was able to finish. They didn't slow up the game. St. George's couldn't react in time, couldn't organize themselves. Malik Lorraine comes on for St. George's College in place of Jindu Powell at right back. Seventieth minute. A spot in the semi-final at stake. Taylor, the man who won the penalty for St. George's College. John for JC. Howell. There is Howell again. Picks out John once again. Howell, two very important assists in the last two games. Picked up an assist against Tivoli Gans. It was the same combination. Howell to Johnson and again in this game. Finding Johnson, really good chemistry between himself, the number 12 and the number 15 from Jamaica College popping up at the right time where they need more they need another goal Sterling for Sears JC attacking oh, no. Sears felt ambitious but ambition I guess doesn't always yield success Cornwall College have pulled one back against BB Coke it's now 2-1 That's over in the Da Costa Cup. Second set of quarterfinal matches on today. They'll finish off their quarterfinal round on Tuesday. Yep. JC gets the call. One nil at half time in St. George's College and their fans were feeling confident. Jamaica College have pulled level and now it's all to play for. A Sterling drives at the St. George's College defense once again. Plays it back to Howell. Howell picks up Mills. Mills finds Sears. There is Javon Mills in possession. Howell again. Driving forward, Howell, his ball is cut out. And St. George's College can relieve a little of that pressure.
Sterling's pass intercepted. Reed bangs it forward. Spins further forward. The shot is well off the mark. To win championships, you have to find a way through these very difficult games, difficult moments. By the way, for the other fans who are listening in, as you mentioned, the Costa Cup, Rakeem Grizzle, the scorer for Cornwall College, trailing BB Cope by two goals to one. Glenn Muir and Christiana still at nil all. It's 1-0 to Dintil against Garvey Moseo, they lead. All matches are in the second half at the moment, and Clarendon College, with a DeAndre Gallimore brace, lead 2-0 against Manchester. Howell in the centre of the park for Jamaica College. Trying to send John on his way. John gets a good ball inside the box. Here's a shot. Oh, lovely save. Was that a good height for Deshaun Davis? Lots of missed kicks, but there's one thing about Jaden Johnson. He's come with his shooting boots on. His strike yet again. And this time, Davis equal to the task. Yeah, look at this. Quite a few missed kicks in here initially. Sterling. John and company, but yeah, Johnson making good connection. And yeah, as you said, a comfortable life for Davis, but still had to get it done. He's been a major difference for Jamaica College Johnson. Corner kick coming up for the defending champions as they fight to remain in the Manning Cup for the 2023 season. This one whipped in into the center of the St. George's defense, the header is wide though. That's Johnson again, wasn't it? Yeah. That man again. Yeah. Had a bit of space. Probably should have done better with the header. Wasn't really challenged, was Johnson. Again, the chances are coming for JC. They can't say that they haven't created a lot. And so far, they've only taken one. And to me, they're almost at maybe 10 really good chances. Davian Ferguson sounded extremely confident in the pre-match interview, suggesting that they started shakily. They had a problem in the first game against Tidal, and they have fixed it. There's been another problem today. Yeah. Sterling, given a lot of time on the ball, Sterling. Here he is again. This time his pass is cut out. This is exactly what we expected. We figured it would come down to the final 15 minutes, Chris Taylor. And it has, take your pick. Who do you suspect will find what is necessary from this point on? Well, in over 11 years of matches between these two teams, we haven't seen a draw. So this current score line, not something that happens between these two teams. It is all St. George's College need, though. So I think there's another goal in it. It's just which colour will it belong to? St. George's College getting ready to make another substitution. The crowd has almost gone quiet, Chris Taylor. In anticipation. Ronaldo Barrett getting ready to come on for Jamaica College as well. Here's Burkett for St. George's College. Chips it into the path of Peart. Two inside the box waiting. This one comes to the edge. 
the shot is well off the mark. From the substitute, Shaquan Clark. Yeah, that should have been a corner, though. There was a deflection. And none of the officials picked it up. As you'd see in cricket, there was a double noise. Okay, Mr. Umpire. Here's Ronaldo Barrett coming on in the 78th. Confirm, Mr. Allrounder. Replaces Chaboy Dennis. Here's Barrett now. Right the way on the football. Fresh legs to try and run at the St. George's College defense. Davian Ferguson is sitting. Looks calm on the outside, but I'm sure burning on the inside. Donald Stewart is assistant up off the bench and screaming all the instructions. Kingston College left it very late yesterday to find the goal that was needed to take them through over St. Catherine. Can Jamaica College deliver similarly? Here is Howell. Barrett the substitute. Mills, back to Sears. St. Georgian, St. George's College closing down all the passing lanes. Goes out wide to Howell, who can't get a cross in, who does get a cross in, but it's headed away. 80th minute. Maybe SDGC have gone into defense mode now as John dribbles forward. Lawrence is free out wide. Lawrence with a less than effective delivery. He had all the time in the world to hear Lawrence and will be disappointed with that cross. Substitution coming up for St. George's College. Violent Free Campbell will be coming on. Can't miss him. He'll be the smallest on the park. And he will replace one of the biggest men in Matthew Spence. Top marksman in the Costa Cup, Kahim Dixon has scored for Clarendon College. They now lead by three goals to nil against Manchester High. And are about to record their second victory in the quarterfinal round. Big favorites to retain their title, Clarendon College. Tivoli have pulled one back against Heidel. It's now 3-1 in the other Manning Cup quarterfinal going on. As we know in that match, though, Tivoli would have to win by two goals to nil to really disturb, but would have to win by two clear goals to disturb this group in terms of the order. So as it stands, Heidel are through safe and sound. Tivoli would need another four goals, at least, and they're only about 10 minutes to go. Jamaica College only need one. Jabari Howell. That's good defending from O'Neill Mitchell. This is nerve wracking stuff. Sometimes it can be more difficult being a fan than actually being out on the field of play. Opportunity for St. George's College to relieve some pressure as Burkett goes to the floor. 
the Intel Technical have found another goal, and in that big matchup against Gavi Maceo, they now lead by two goals to nil. Wow. Meron Gordon under pressure, coming off of a 4 0 win against BB Coke. The Intel should be heading, well, it looks like they're heading to two wins from two. wins from their last two in the quarterfinal round would take Jamaica College through but they need one more goal at least there is still time quite a bit of it as well here is Mills decided to try his luck from distance that's part of the game but it's goal it goes well over the top a bit of desperation from Jamaica College a lack of imagination as well. Davian Ferguson is saying that. Giovanni Taylor will be coming on. Live standings. Heidel lead the group ahead of St. George's College and Jamaica College. JC can change that with a goal here. They would go to six points as Giovanni Taylor comes on for JC. number 10 it worked when he brought on Johnson there's Craig Butler there's Mona team already in the last four and they are watching the team they are likely to play regardless of whether it's St. George's College or Jamaica College GC fans trying to pump the players on. If they can get a goal here, they would all but finish this off, I think. There's a shot. Right at Renton. There's Vassar Reynolds, the Kingston College coach in white. No purple today. He is also there. Both coaches in the semi-finals yeah. await their opponents. Foster Reynolds has won the Walker Cup with Wilmers. He's won the Da Costa Cup with Rossiz. He's won the Champions Cup. Yes. That man has won a couple of Walker Cups as well. <laughs> a man in Cup, not in that colour though. Brought Kingston College back to glory. Lord Le Bernard. Having spent years at Wilmers where he couldn't deliver them to the promised land, but he won two Walker Cups yeah but he definitely delivered Kingston College the prize that trophy for the Manning Cup yeah. and then did it again won it all didn't he yeah he did and played an attractive brand of football as well the fans are getting back into it because they realize it's coming towards that moment SDGC just need to remain disciplined. Jamaica College need a moment of magic. Oh, you never know, simplicity. Sears. That's not what they need. It's turning, who has been so good today. Doesn't control well. Yeah, crunch time now. The famed Purples got it done. As their motto says, the brave may walk, may fall, but never yield. Well, work is burning in this field as Taylor goes down, free kicks at George's College. But is it enough work to get them the goal they desperately desire? Free kick taken quickly. St. George's College may throw a few forward here. This is a glorious chance, the cross from Barrett. And now they have to get back. Johnson to John. 
And the play is broken up by Mitchell, who despite an early yellow card, I think has had a fabulous game for STGC. Barrett won it. That's good work from Tariq Jones. Malachi Sterling, Jamaica College in possession, 88th minute of this match. John Chases will have a corner kick. Dying moments of the 90. The JC fans shall call. They are desperate for it. Dylan John with the delivery this time, with Sayers off the park. That's headed away, out of danger. Another shot of desperation. We've seen Sarah take most of the dead ball situations. It was Dylan John who took that one. The Sportsmax app moment brought to you by the Sportsmax app. Dylan John with the cross. Johnson with the shot. Dejon Davis with the save. Not convinced that was his best one of the day, but it was one of quite a few that has kept St. George's College in this game and in pole position to advance to the semi-finals. We are in the 90th minute. We watch the fourth official close there to see how much time will be added on. Here's the ball floated inside and behind. Cheers coming from the St. George's section of the crowd. Four minutes to be added at the end of the 90. Desperate faces on the Jamaica College side of the divide. There is confirmation and we are into those four minutes. It was six for St. Catherine to hold on yesterday and they couldn't. It's four for St. George's College to hold on today. Can they? Jamaica College have found a way so many times before. Under Miguel Coley they did. Under Andrew Peart, they did. And Davian Ferguson is trying not to become the first Jamaica College coach since 2012, not to reach the Manning Cup semi-finals. Here's Dylan John. Another desperate delivery. Howell battling for it, a swing from Birkin, a free kick for Jamaica College. This is a good chance, Chris. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you look nervous. I've never heard you stop talking for so long. <laughs> I think you're nervous. Yeah. I wonder why I, I you're just, just a commentator. Another, yeah, I think there's another big moment in the game. Johnson. Even just four minutes. Yeah, Johnson is there. I think Sears is there as well. Johnson has already scored once. This is a good distance to be able to get the ball over the wall. It's some way out. It would take a blinder from here. 
We've seen blinders before. Johnson has scored one already. We are in the 93rd minute. Surely if JC scored now, there would be no way back for St. George's College. Low down, here's the chance. Another save. Another save. Deshaun Davis is saving St. George's College over and over and over. Yeah, well, that's, that's your chance. That's the chance for Jamaica College. And I must say, after this free kick, that the second touch there is poor. It's not good enough from Lawrence. Why are you taking an additional touch there? Took a deflection off the wall, Chris Taylor. And Davis did well to make the save. It's not over yet, though. JC still coming forward. The pass is cut out. St. George's College can clear the football. That's going to be an SDGC free kick. That's why Frank Campbell was brought out to the park. Yellow card. And it may be the final one he receives in the Manning Cup this season. 30 seconds to play. Tajir Lawrence sees yellow. And St. George's College will be in no rush to take this one. The light blues feel as if they have done enough. But there is still time on the clock. But not a lot of it. We are about to hit 94. We are into time, added on to added time. Neville Bell has a look at the official! St. George's College are through! And for the first time since 2012, Jamaica College have been denied a spot in the Money Cup semi-finals. Look at them go. They have come to Old Hope Road and they have gotten the desired result. a glorious chance in the first half Howell to put them in front now they rule that and many others those are tears of joy sadness delight the realization that they have done it New Manning Cup champion will be crowned for 2023. The teams who contested the championship match last season have both been knocked out at the quarterfinal stage this time around. St. Andrew Technical yesterday, Jamaica College today. Mona, Kingston College, Heidel and St. George's College are the final four in the Manning Cup for 2023. They are also the four that will represent the urban area in the Champions Cup. The draw to be done on Tuesday night following the final set of quarterfinal matches in the Da Costa Cup. There's the final score. Jamaica College 1, St. George's College 1. But it's SDGC who have the desired result. Oshik Nishan set the game on its way. St. George's College needing only a draw. Jamaica College needing to win. Adrian Reed with a free kick early. Wide of the mark. Glorious chance here for Jabari Howell. Couldn't beat the goalkeeper. Sayers with this corner. The header well wide from Sterling. St. George's College struggled in the first half. That was a poor pass and Sterling picked up on it. Lovely cutback to Amarley King, but it was a really weak effort from the Jamaica College number nine. This one went into the back of the net, but Jamoin Dennis was in an outside position.
the assistant in the perfect position. That one over the top for us, TGC. But it was Jamaica College who continued to create the chances in the first half. This one falling for Tahir Lawrence. Dejon Davis was having a peach of a first half. Dennis to Lawrence. Davis in the way. What a game he had. Dylan John with a class of with a cross of absolute quality. But Jamoy Dennis couldn't head on target. It was well wide. And then in the closing stages, after all the domination from Jamaica College, the number six is collided. Javon Mills pushing Zabir Taylor. And St. George's College had a penalty. Brian Birkin steps up and slotted it home for his 20th goal of the season to go with his 11th assist, his 39th goal in his senior schoolboy football career. And he was letting the Georgians know there was still a lot of work to do. JC continued to miss opportunities. Davian Ferguson brought on Jada Johnson in the second half. And he delivered for his coach. A wonderful build-up and a glorious finish. Precise, pinpoint accuracy. It was 1-1. And at that stage, Jamaica College would have been feeling that they had time to get the job done. 30 minutes to find one more goal. They got the opportunities. Johnson forcing another brilliant save out of Dijon Davis. Was at a good height though, and he did very well to parry it over the top. Yes, we saw a lot of that. But even at that stage, JC still felt they could do it, and they should have done it. Free kick taking a deflection. Davis with the save, the follow up. Lawrence trying to take a second touch of it. And that was the chance gone. It was the final one. Davis had done it again, and St. George's College had denied Jamaica College a spot in the Manning Cup semi-finals for the first time since 2012. Jamaica College, 20 shots, nine of them on target. St. George's College, 12 shots, just three on target. 27 falls in the contest, 13 committed by JC. Six yellow cards, four of them going to Jamaica College. JC dominated possession, 58% to 42. There were seven corners and six of them went to Jamaica College. But the most important statistic is that St. George's College avoided defeat, which is all they needed to do to join Heidel from Group 2 into the semi-finals of the East a digital Manning Cup schoolboy football competition for 2023. Let's go to Gerard Marcelli, and there is no doubt who the digital man of the match is. Yeah, thank you so much, Ricardo. Of course, we have the presentation to the man of the match, to John Davis. He is the man of the match, of course, our presentation made by Kaden Webley, the junior brand manager of Digicel. So, thank you, Kaden. Uh, Dijon, talk to me about the first save. You made a lot of good saves in this game, but that first one in particular was the best of the game, in my opinion. Was it in yours? Uh, with the first save, I just realized that the ball came through and I had to be there to back up. My defenders failed to do that for me, but they have really done well throughout the game. I know, I know I had to step up to the plate and make that save, and so I did. Yeah, obviously the chance to go to the semi-finals made you put your all in this game, but was it extra special that you were able to knock out the defending champions? I mean, it was extra special to me because my first Manning Cup season, I came back in 2021. As most people know, we got demolished by JC 6-0 in 2021. And this is my chance that I had to step up and show them that we were coming back. It was not just not our season and we're here now and we did that and we beat them. And now we're through to the semi-final. Yeah, through to the semi-finals, as you just mentioned. Is this a message now to you, those that you face ahead of you, that you're coming for the title? I mean, I'm just here to play my game. I'm here to just play whoever comes in front of me. And let, just let's hope for the win. All right, thank you so much. And congratulations again on being the man of the match. Thank you. Yeah, me. The John Davis there, the man of the match from St. George's College. Let's have a chat now with Coach David Ferguson from Jamaica College. Who, step up. Yeah, know. a little bit. Disappointed. Coach, of course, yes, you are disappointed with this result, uh, but just exactly how disappointed are you? 
I'm extremely disappointed. I think we came out here today with a plan. We created enough chances, um, but we just didn't put them away. We have had some issues up top, and it showed here today. Judges came, they came with a resilient spirit, um, and they deserve to go through. Congratulations to them. Yeah, of course. Now, uh, your attack was all out. You, you tried all you could, especially in the first half, but was the St. George's College defense just too good for Jamaica College today? I wouldn't say that. We created a lot of chances. Even in the last minute, we had a a one on one with the goalkeeper half a ricochet, which we should have scored. But such is football, yeah? You, you win some, you lose some, and this one today is one that we didn't win. But we don't say goodbye to you just yet because you have the Walker Cup to play for. Mm -hmm. Are you going to win that title? Well, the most important thing now is to get these boys resettled, refocused, and we'll see what happens there. All right, Coach, well, we'll see you then. Thank you yeah, so man, much. Good, good. That was Coach Davion Ferguson from Jamaica College. The two coaches, of course, embracing St. George's College. Brain fuzzy. Of course, you know, if you see Neville Bell on, on screen doing an interview, that means that they would have lost. But it's a different story here. So we have Marcel Gale. Coach Gale, talk to me about this win. How important was it to lift the morale, not only of St. George's College football team, but of the entire school? Uh, to God be the glory, all things he has done. Um, you know, uh, mostly credit to uh, Jamaica College. Something we're prepared for. We prepared today that we're going to suffer a lot today. It's a very, it's a very um, quality team, JC, not taking none away from it. Um, but it's a case of defense versus attack today. I thought we defense totally today, and credit must be given to um, Dijor in goal today. He was fantastic between the sticks today. I think he made a difference um, for us today. Yeah, uh, of course we know that Coach Bell wanted the boys to press a little bit more. Is, is that something that you're going to work on going forward in this competition? Um, <laughs> um, you know, the, the, the game is like that. Um, sometimes you prepare for, for some moments at some occasion. Um, today we, we prepare for everything. You know, um, JC has created a whole heap of opportunity today. But we are stout today. I mean, I look, I look a bit lucky today too also. Um, fortunate today when we break, um, you know, we, we, we create not much chance today, but the one we create, we, we score. And that was good. But it, that's the nature of the game. But our objective today, we met it. All right, so you have Mona High in the semi-finals, in case you didn't know. <laughs> Mona High, a team that plays similarly to Jamaica College, but a lot more attacking. Is it going to be something similar, uh, some kind of similar tactics that you go into that game with? Um, for now, we just want to get we want to do the recovery right now. And uh, we plan ahead for that. I mean, we have a couple of days to, to, to plan for that. So we, we go out to join board and we plan for that game. All right, Coach, well, we'll see you then. Thank you so much and congratulations again. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much, Gerard Morrissey. The Champions Cup quarterfinals will come up before we get to the Manning Cup semifinals. There you have it, Heidel and St. George's College qualifying for the semifinals of the Manning Cup from Group 2. And for the first time since 2012, Jamaica College on the outside looking in. So JC and Tivoli coming out of the same group, exiting from the same group at the quarterfinal stage. Yeah, here's the semi-final lineup. Mona versus St. George's College. Heidel versus Kingston College. Heidel and Kingston College coming out of the same first round group. They meet again in the last four. Mona are there for a second year in a row. St. George's College in the last four for the first time since 2018 when they went all the way to the final and were minutes away from winning the title. They'll prefer to forget that though. Scoopboy football continues on your home of champions on Tuesday. Garvin Maceo versus Cornwall College. Live 2.30 p.m., 3.30 ECT. That's when the pregame show will begin on Sportsmax Plus. And the Champions Cup draw will follow the four teams from the Manning Cup. And the final four from the Costa Cup. It begins at 6 p.m. And then Champions Cup action will be next week, Saturday. Mm. We're at that time of the season. Georgian fans will celebrate from Old Hope Road to North Street. The job far from done, but they have achieved what they came here to do today. They have denied Jamaica College a spot in the last four, and they head home jubilant as they advance.
Yo, Issa. Yo, High school boy football look this season. People, them ready, you know. All right, then. Pick up. Man in cup. Only for your shield, you make we link up. We watch the Champions Cup. Ben Francis Walker Cup. Which team are win the championship this season? Yo, Issa. Papa Banda, if a school, I got finish the league and beat, no. Which you, I got collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yo, Issa. Missy fans are roll out all boat. Be a flag for a vehicle. Looking at the crowd. Bus loan, I support us from school and community, too. People, nothing at the stand. Some are listening to Prairie. They must have a watch it on TV, too. Country and turn your night for one reason. Issa. School boy football. Run, come. Look one, look all. Which team are the best and I got better than the best and if I hear TV, your chest. Issa. School boy football. That team could rise and that team could fall. But they never will know until the whistle blows so around. Come enjoy the show. Yo, Issa. That, that, that competition I never have a nice up. People love see when boy I get nice up on the field. I'm going to score from far and them love with peaceful and the youths now. Are. Yo, Issa. School boy football, no local. The youths are moving on to international big league. And I still people are but member which party start. Issa. School boy football. Run, come. Look one, look all. Which team are the best and I got better than the rest of the fire team beat your chest. Issa. School boy football. A team could rise and a team could fall. But they never will know until the whistle blows. So run, come enjoy the show. Issa. School boy football. Run, come. Look one, look all. Which team are the best and I got better than the rest of the fire team beat your chest? Issa, 